This podcast is made possible by Focusrite Pro. Beginning with Rupert Neves' ISA 110 preamp and channel strip design in 1985 to today's RedNet audio over IP audio interfaces, Focusrite has consistently stood on the cutting edge of audio production technology. Focusrite Pro represents this commitment to innovation and pristine audio quality with its ISA, RED, and RedNet ranges. Learn more at pro.focusrite.com. Hey, it's Larry Crane. Welcome to the Tape Op Podcast. For this episode, we chat with Andrew Fern from the legendary UK duo Sleaford Mods. Their latest release, UK Grim, picks up where their 2021 release, Spare Ribs, left off with gritty minimalist production and Jason Williamson's blunt societal diagnostic lyrics. Enjoy. Why does the darkness alone cross-sectioned it's not a drink and I don't fucking smoke Jason why does the darkness alone Cool man well thanks for doing this I I gotta say I I, uh I've been I've been enjoying the new record quite a bit, and uh, before we kind of got into the the way that you're currently working, et cetera, I was curious how you how you got into making music. Yeah, um, yeah, it's just been a, a something that I've always been into. I can't really remember when I wasn't into it, you know, um, even at school, and yeah, it's just been one of those things that I've made sure that I did something in music for a living you know um yeah i don't think i don't think i had a lot of uh other drives you know some people have a few different things that they're interested in and then pick one but for me it's just always been music you know did you start playing a an instrument yeah i mean even at school like, we had quite a good music teacher and um he he um you know, I was in all the school productions, singing in the school productions. And I just remember, like, even as far as, like, being, like, seven or eight, you know, like, singing certain school hymns. And they weren't hymns, but they were, like, you know, Ralph McTell and they were, like, other songs. But just just having this like, obsession for music, you know, like, I don't know, I can't explain it, but it just made me, feel, you know, it, it, it was very hedonistic for me, music was, you know. So it was always something that, I got off on, I suppose. <laughs> what were some of the first tools that you had when you started recording? Well, what, when I was really young, I had this keyboard that I saved up for months and months that you could pro, you could play into it basically, and over it had these different sections, these synth sections, so you could like record a section and then choose a different sound and record over it. But then there's a sort of a, a three year gap where I just sort of like you know, went out a lot until I moved to Nottingham when I was 19. And I basically bought a four track then. A friend lent me a, a microverb unit. Don't you remember the microverb, the Alesis one. Um, and uh, yeah, and a crappy Argus guitar. And, uh, and that was it. You know, I was just kind of like, I think I had like some Casio tone keyboard. And a lot of that stuff's pretty rough, but you know, again, it was just the beginning of me thinking, oh, right, I can, I'm just going to do this now. <laughs> I'm not going to get a job. I'm just going to do this, you know. You kind of took a, a route of, you know, a little bit more on the electronic side and maybe, like, you got into DJing and... and uh... Sort of. I mean, a bit of both. I mean, I would say when I was, like I say, but that sort of bit I was describing off, like, 17, 18, 19... I was in indie bands. I was a singer in an indie band, um, but it was, you know, it was c- c- more about socialising and and that kind of scene, you know. And I've always had that duality as well as liking pop music, you know. Bands like the Butthole has always been really important to me, and all that sort of American rock stuff. Um, yeah, you know, so the duality of playing drums in bands as well. I've done a lot of that, and um, I used to do this improvised band where I would just drum and sing and make stuff up, and whoever I could get to join in with me would join. In. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but, you know, never any gigs. I don't know. There's something kind of like pu- purist about playing live instruments that I always just used to just do it. And, you know, maybe that's the difference. I always saw electronic music as more composing, you know, something to compose music where live music is just so instant, you know, to jam with a, with friends. You know what I mean? It's it's there's no there's no hype is there with that it's just direct not not too long ago you and jason connected and started making music together and um you know what's what's so interesting about uh slifford mods is that you know the the it especially today in today's sort of music climate and i and you know there are incredible uh microcosms of music happening all over the world and you know in places like yeah. you know there's like the cyberpunk scene in Brooklyn that's pretty yeah. you know pushing the pushing the boundaries of you know even listenability in in some, in some cases you know um uh, yeah. you know i mean it it, it 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 in in terms of sort of like what what punk rock is right i mean like when i think you know we're probably roughly the same age and you know we i'd go see the dead kennedys play or i'd go see you know uh you know bands but those they're very very you know musical and um um even though the the lyrical content and the delivery and the attitude was very was very punk and you know bands like black flag or or you know the southern california punk rock scene whatever but you know, Sleeper's got this, this such it, it's so punk rock in in its aesthetic. But the but the the production is is this ultra minimal, um, you know, very very simple, and and I think it's such an interesting uh, delivery mechanism for Jason to, you know, kind of profess over or to you know do his thing yeah. over, and so. I was just wondering if you could talk about that and your your approach to that, and especially early on, like how how that kind of all happened and what your your approach as somebody yeah. that's creating the music is. Yeah, I think really really early on, I think it was quite obvious. You know, there were a few things that I tried where just frequency wise, there was obviously you know his voice was kind of like frequency wise replaced the guitar you know so that's why it often ended up being drums and bass because um it didn't need it didn't need that guitar there competing with his voice you know um and i i like minimal stuff anyway i mean it, you know it can be a it can be a full piece of music but it still not has to have that dynamic to it you know um yeah so i think it's just that it's just the guitar you know, having a really loud, noisy guitar there just didn't work. It would just fill filled the space. And, of course, you know, people wanted to hear what he was saying. The words were kind of quite important. So, um, yeah, you know, keeping it that minimal sort of driving bass sound just seemed to work really well, you know. How do you guys work together? Do you bring in... Uh tracks that you've been working on by yourself and then you kind of figure out what where the marriages are in terms of lyrics and yeah i I definitely kind of i suppose i i you know bring the music um i mean it varies with ideas because some of the some of the music musics can be a bit sort of cheeky you know things like showboat and stuff like that a bit more sort of cheeky vibe so you can sort of like you know as it's sort of gone along it's kind of they're kind of some of them are just no brainers. If it's a driving beat, then it's you, you know what's going to happen on it. And then the sort of more cheeky numbers, Jason comes up with something more interesting for it, you know. Um, and also allowing him to like make up the melody for the vocals, you know, gives it that um, gives it an authenticity, you know, where it's not completely like pop music when people write pop tunes and sell them or whatever you know it's not it's not on that level either so it's got that kind of mixture to it um which i think is a very sort of british thing in a way as well you know we do kind of take things and do our own version of them in a way you know i come to appreciate it more and more that i listen to it even though there's not that much there you know um 
the marriage of of the grittiness and the stripped downness and you know it there's there's something so unique and interesting there that like you said i mean i think you know the ability to have jason play you know of the his voice is not just lyric you know or melody it it does play a role and i think that's such an important part of production yeah. that you touched upon which was that his voice plays this role of the guitar or some mid-range you know, yeah. element in the in the yeah. production, and you know, as simple and obvious as that seems, I feel like for young producers and music makers, the role of different you know pieces of a production are so incredibly important. And that's where you end up with problems, like you know, just on the technical side, mix wise, if you have a bunch of stuff that's jammed in and masking frequencies and stuff. So, it's. I think that I think those things are there's a little bit of luck with those things, you know. When you think about a young band and they say they're all friends, and there's, if there's five of them, for example, and there's there's obviously too many guitars already, unless one of them's playing the keyboard. But you've already got a lot of a lot of sound happening, haven't you? It's very difficult. Um, so I mean, I I do think a lot of people probably like more minimal music. Um, if they even if they don't realize they do you know it's uh it's just easy maybe it's just easier to digest for people rather than stuff that where there's so much going on you know i don't know are you still working with the same same set of tools you were when you started making records together i mean I, i've got i've tried to like not be too ostentatious as i've you know money's come into it and i bought a few bits of modular stuff recently um but yeah, I mean, like, you know, over the years, I mean, some of the things were, some of the tracks were made, not laboriously, but um, for Divide and Exit, a friend did set up um, a kit in his cellar, and, and he, because he had loads of old school uh, gear, you know, um, like a BBC mixing desk and stuff like that. So we just multi track some stuff, you know, just, just some, I just jammed some, some stuff, and then we took loops from it, you know. Because I think the beauty of it was that some of the early stuff, again, is from live recording. So I used to use a friend's rehearsal studio a lot. Um, so I have got a lot of back catalogue of, of music that's just not doing anything, you know. So it's ideal for Sleaford Mods to use for it. Um, so, yeah, so it's, it's a case of having that. It's a very sort of 90s thing, you know, like to have a um, a world of music that you can sample without any worries because you own the music anyway. Um, it, just, it just seems like a good thing to do, you know, a recycling thing, recycling thing to do, you know, where there's so much music that's happened as well towards the end of the 90s and, and since then that's not really been heard or not really had its time. It's like everything's moving too fast almost, you know. Are you Are you playing all the instruments? Are you playing bass and you're playing drums and... Yeah, I am. Yeah, I mean, again, a lot of it is manipulated. I mean, I mean, like if you take something like I don't know, ways don't fit. It is just a loop from it, and <laughs> but again, I think that's another element to it where it sort of gives it that more kind of sampled feel to it. You know, where it's like techno, for example, has that driving feel to it. You know, it's not it's not like a live band where a live drummer does kind of like you know, move the band tempo sort of changes subtly, doesn't it? You know, with the flow of the human energy, if you like, whereas this has got that kind of robotic drive to it, you know, that people are quite comfortable with because we've had like, whatever, 30 years of dance music. So people are kind of quite, you know, okay with that. Um, but I've always had that duality as well. You know, I've grew, grown up through d dance music as well as, as well as live music. So I think it, I find it really important to reflect both sides of it. As you look back on when you when you made your first records with Jason and Sleaford Mods, you know, how how has the production changed or your perspective changed? Yeah, I mean I, I think it's there's 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 what there's one aspect where it it's going to change, you know, it's like um but it's just trying to trying to hang on to that you know, trying to hang on to the spirit of it. And, you know, for me, it's it's obvious that it could change really quickly, but it's a matter of keeping hold of, 
keeping hold of the reins if you like and making sure that it doesn't progress too much you know um yeah one thing i always say about this is that there was a variety of tunes on austerity uh, uh and to try and keep that in there you know uh from like the bangers to like sort of more hip hoppy sort of introspective tunes you know and try and keep that mixture of of tunes in there because i think that was kind of the winning thing about that album in the first place you know it wasn't just what 12 tracks uh you know fast banging tracks there's a variety of music on there really so um yeah to, to try and keep that going you know are you working on this this project every day um how do you guys work I'll just, I'll just make music all the time um and then you know um some things will just kind of go into a pot because I'll just think oh that that's very uh sleaford esque and then other things will just be ideas that I've I've got to actually produce a tune you know um yeah so it's just again trying to keep that mixture going trying of 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 uh, of method you know rather, rather than it all sounding the same you know um, so that's probably my biggest criticism of a lot of bands, you know, where their album, it's just all, it all sounds like the same track a little bit sometimes, you know. Like the Ramones, you know, it's great if you like the Ramones, but... That's a challenge, using, the, with the way that you produce music for this band, and that's so minimal, how do you work to keep it not the same? There's a few little tricks, you know, that I've definitely got um, going on, you know, like, for example, like the bass, because um, we don't use a lot of pedals, I've just tried to use a different bass, you know, every time. And, and luckily, over the years, we've used different studios, so there's been a different bass there. Um, but, I mean, you know, even if it's just an app on a bass or a different synth, you know, bass, uh, um it's a different sound isn't it you know so it's got different frequencies different set of frequencies going off so it, it comes across once you've written a bass line with it it's you know i think we're lucky at the moment with with me with gear with stuff you know there's so many so many affordable little gadgets and things you can buy that sound really high quality compared when i was a kid where there was, wasn't anything around that didn't cost a fortune you know his delivery is 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 pretty interesting and i was curious how you capture that and what what tools you use and what gear has has kind of played out best for that um yeah i mean in the early days when we used to record at my flat it was just really rough you know there'd be uh, the speakers my krks would be on uh wall brackets and the room was quite small so he'd often be stood right next to the speaker recording the vocal just on a 58 as well so there'd be a lot of spill um but that would that was kind of like that would add quite a good live uh overtone to everything you know so that always worked really well um and then because you know some they've, they've been made of different places um with diff, slightly different gear, but for most most of the time now we use quite a high quality mic, you know, when we record at Nottingham, it's quite a good mic. Um, and again, it's a lot of less is more, really. It's, it's not a lot of, um, without the track being a bit more intros introspective, like I say, that might need a bit of delay or reverb, it's just keeping it dry as dry as you can keep it, you know. Yeah, the, the productions are as dry as a bone. Yeah, totally. It's the same when we when we've toured. I mean, the amount of gigs where we just can we turn the reverb off the mic and every and they're like, oh, you just want it dry? Like, yeah, just have it dry. <laughs> so it's it's almost like we've gone. The industry has got just added too many bells and whistles, and because we haven't got them, that's been a thing. You know, people going, oh well, yeah, you can you can decide not to use that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, I mean, the fact that you you haven't, like, you know, jumped in the river with, like, every 
kind of modern production trend and splice pack and i mean we have this conversation with so many people it's like man music is like unbelievably homogenized you know right now and in so many yeah, ways yeah. it doesn't mean that people aren't making creative good music but man it like the tools are so readily available and everyone has them and they just push a button and and there's a lot of button pushing you know um well, it's it's just it's just gone mad, hasn't it? I mean, I use this. Um, I've been using this uh, Schleps uh, plugin. If you know that, it's a wave it's through through waves. It's quite good. It's like a, a channel strip. It looks like a channel strip, basically. Um, and there's loads of presets, so you can just pick a preset and then tweak the preset. You know, or just you know, I mean, that's the thing. Now you can learn about music. Uh, production from selecting presets playing with presets and you know take it from there it's all about your ears ultimately isn't it you know these adverts that say um you know are are you tired of your music not sounding like it does on tv it's like well no not at all (laughs) i don't i don't i don't want it to sound like that you know um because it's about your uh, to me it's about your relationship with production and i think that's another thing that I'm one of those people that I make things sound like I like them. And I know to other people, they don't sound quite, you know, my productions, my, my production, it's not spot on. It's slightly dinted in certain areas, but that's what gives it that sound and that identification, you know. Um, and, that, and that's what you can do now because you've got everything, you know, you've got such great EQs, even in Ableton, you've got great EQs. You don't need to, uh, struggle you know um like i used to using a four track you know i could never get enough treble or the treble i had was terrible <laughs> you know um right. so you know that that's the thing i think i guess people are a bit overwhelmed with how much gear they, they've got or how much eq and how much you know you know um just adding a bit of reverb to something can make so many things sound brighter can't it um to certain pieces of music but to do that back in the 90s it was a nightmare you know it was a lot it was a big struggle to try and arrange now it's built into a lot of devices yeah exactly it's on your phone um are you primarily working in ableton is that your no no um i've been using ableton with the modular stuff because um just for the just really using it to record into um and obviously I can master it a little bit in there. Um, but uh, yeah, I've basically been using it recently just as a clock because if I record a, a piece of modular stuff, then I can record um, along with it, you know, more stuff along with it sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, Ableton's a huge toy. Um, does a lot of stuff, doesn't it? So... Um, but I guess I'm saying I'm not using it that conventionally because it's actually for dance music and various styles and loops and all that kind of scene, you know. So I'm using it in a very minimal way, as, as you'd expect. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, well, I mean, you're, the production sound to me like there's certainly no more than eight tracks happening. Definitely not. Occasional vocal double now. I mean, I think what people don't understand when you're super young is that, like, how massive things can be when they're simple and there's all that yeah. all that room, you know, all that space uh, sonically, you know, forget about the actual music, yeah. but just the sonics. Look, think about a band like ACDC okay. or something, you know, it's like not a lot going on you know just like some simple parts and a and a vocal and it's and it's just massive so i yeah I, that's where i feel for young people really especially with electronic music um or production um there's so much smoke being blown up, up arses it's just uh you know it's 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 cruel you know it really is i mean like say acdc it's about creating a sound isn't it you know when you hear acdc you just go wow what's that sound you know and that's that's what you think yeah. think about it, you know. That's what hits you straight away, and and it's just probably quite simple what they've done, really, isn't it? You know, it's it's about things being direct and having a direct message with what you're doing. I think don't get lost, um, yeah, 
you know, um, it'll always be popular. I don't think that minimal uh, approach will ever not be popular because it it's just so direct. It just speaks to people straight away, whether it's, you know, even it's like Muddy Waters back in the day, just playing a guitar and singing or, or ACDC. It's just, it's kind of the same thing, you know, it's it's not... It's getting to the point, which is what people want, you know, I think that's what people like about us. It's like... Thanks for listening. Find us online at tapebop.com, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Until next time, 